are the best ways for forced appreciation on a single family home? And what are examples of over rehabbing a property? Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, so forced appreciation of a home. This is a great question. You hear it a lot in commercial properties. So it's interesting that Vincent is asking for this uh, as it relates to residential property. Forced appreciation. Let's 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 differentiate, right? Market appreciation, uh, natural appreciation is what happens for supply and demand, right? We are in a market right now where there's incredible demand for property. We just have an absolute shortage of properties in the United States. We're 20 million units short, and that's not going to change five, 10 years from now. It's going to still be the case. It's going to take a long time for us to be caught up with uh, the demand for su uh, the supply and demand. So appreciation simply is, you know, these properties are appreciating because the market is demanding it. And so the prices are going up in different markets. Now, personally, I don't like to invest in markets with crazy appreciation. Uh, I tend to see those as kind of bubble markets, you know, San Francisco, Vegas, Miami, New York, those types of places. I don't invest in those areas. The areas I like to invest in have nice appreciation, but they're kind of boring appreciation. And I look at appreciation as sort of icing on the investing cake, if you will. I don't invest for appreciation, but it's nice. <laughs> it's nice because if I want to pull some equity out of that property at some point, great. But at the end of the day, it's nice icing on the cake. It's not why I invest. I invest for cash flow uh, and asset protection. Le I'm sorry, legacy wealth protection and making sure that my money is in a tangible asset rather than uh, US dollars, etc. So uh, appreciation just kind of comes with market conditions. Now forced appreciation, what Vincent is asking about is is where you're trying to change the the value of that property through some manipulative ways. And it's not necessarily bad or or evil or anything like that. It's just that you are trying to force it rather than the market conditions. And one way, the biggest way of all to do that is to raise rent, forcing the appreciation of your property, raising the rent of the property. And that can be tricky. You want to make sure that it's commensurate. In my opinion, you want to make it sure that it's commensurate with market conditions, because now suddenly, you know, if your property is $200 more per month than the rest of the street or the rest of the neighborhood, well, you know, does yours stand out for some particular reason? You know, does yours have a pool or is there some reason that you're charging $200 more than the same house, the same square footage in that neighborhood for no, for no real reason? So that's one way is forced appreciation. But this is where I want to be speaking with my property manager uh, and looking at, hey, now that that tenant has moved out, can we raise rent for the next tenant because market conditions warrant us raising the rent 50 to $100 or $200, whatever it happens to be in that particular community? That's one way of doing it. Other forced appreciation ways can, you know, uh, can can be trying to make grand improvements to the property. Again, this normally comes from things outside, uh, you know, like a, a park or things like you're creating at, at a commercial space. So forced appreciation. So if you look at the value of a property, like a hundred unit or fifty unit apartment complex how can you add value to that property that may not already have been added to that property and therefore forcing the rents to be higher, just the overall standard of the property to be higher, adding a pool, uh, creating a community space where moms and dads can, uh, with a stroller, watch, you know, walk their kids in a park that's outside of the, outside of the apartment. That was the case in New York City. Sometimes you'd have a green space that was created in the courtyard or something like that. Uh, maybe a playground or, you know, like I said, a pool, a community pool, uh, or just making upgrades inside the property uh, are also ways to kind of increase the value, but also increase rents. So you're, you know, that that's also a capital investment on your part to put money into these apartments to raise rent that way and push the rent up because you're making improvements to the property. You're making improvements to uh, adding in granite countertops. You're putting in you're putting in cabinets that are upgraded. You're putting in stainless steel appliances, uh, all those types. Maybe you're putting in uh, an alarm system, other things. Uh, you asked another question, Vincent, which is about over upgrading a property. When do you? When is it too much? When have you done too much? And Again, this is very important to be having those conversations with your property managers because they're going to know the other types of properties in that neighborhood, in that school district, and what is demanded for rent. And they're going to tell you by looking at it when they do a walkthrough of the property, hey, Vincent, 
we think that you could probably get another $200 per month in rent if you provided, you know, these types of appliances in the property. You placed a, a new stove or those types of things or you, you upgraded the bathroom or something. But very often, a lot of the times people think that just making certain upgrades is going to increase the rent. Every few years I look at these lists that are published where they catalog the things that will add real value to your property and the things that won't. And these things fluctuate from time to time. Over the past few years, I mean, one big improvement for the property is a garage door. I know this may not sound like the most, you know, the biggest home improvement, but really making a beautiful garage door aesthetically on the outside of the property, one of those really nice barn door style garage doors with the, the really nice uh, slatted, slatted wood look can really increase the property value. I know it sounds strange, but sure enough, the data is, is in on that. Uh, in really taking care of the outside of the property, uh, the aesthetic value of the outside of the property from maybe new sod, new land, a new landscaping, make sure trees are cut back. Uh, that can actually really add a nice pop to your property. Um, areas where I think people over upgrade sometimes can be in the kitchen. They go crazy on things that don't necessarily fit the way a homeowner or a, a tenant would want. They do some kind of crazy cabinet collection that's the color is really in their interest, but not in the tenant's interest. So maybe trying to stay way more neutral in your cabinet choices. People sometimes put in like a dark wood and really just doesn't fit. And that color can really be off-putting to someone. They walk into that kitchen and they say, this just isn't me. This isn't for me. And great that you spent $10,000 on it, but this doesn't work for me. <laughs> and that can be like the thing that flips somebody on that. Over upgrading the bathrooms as well doing all sorts of improvements and things in a shower that don't need to be done. All kinds of additional shower head and faucets that are spraying out all over the place. I've seen people waste a lot of money on those types of upgrades or putting in jacuzzi tubs and things like this that break a lot and are just not needed. That's just not what a tenant is looking for. Tenants are looking for space, okay? They're looking for value. Uh, and you as a landlord also need to, be, need to be thinking about durability too. So putting in things that are going to be constantly breaking, not a smart move. And also, you know, right now, solar panels, still expensive. And I hear from people that say, I'm going to put solar panels on my rental property because that will really attract a tenant. Sorry, it doesn't. It doesn't. Ten tenants really aren't looking for that. Uh, and so you're going to be spending a lot of money putting solar panels on a roof because you want to be more sustainable. And good for you if that's something that you want to do personally good for you. But at the end of the day, it's not something that a tenant is going to jump on and be super excited about. Uh, that is absolutely the case. So thank you for that question, Vincent. Good question on forced appreciation. If you'd like to leave us a voicemail question about real estate investing or anything that's on your mind, please do so by going to our website. Go to morrisinvest.com and click on the voicemail button right there. And we also have a uh, Tons of great information on that website. I'd love for you to download our free, totally free Freedom Cheat Sheet. Uh, again, it's about three, four pages. It's a PDF. Again, totally free. You can find that on our website as well to help you on this road to financial freedom. It's morrisinvest.com slash freedom. So go grab that cheat sheet today. We'll see you back here next time. Now go out there, take action, become a real estate investor. I believe it's the number one way to build wealth. We'll see you next time, everyone.